Hello and welcome to the 32nd video in this series, Program HS Engine in C. So I said at the end of the last video we'd start looking at generating night moves in this video. Well, we're going to actually start building the code that generates all of the other piece moves in one go to prevent repeating code all over, all over the place. Before we start that, the first thing you need to do is you need to go into the reset board function in board.c and you need to add this line in here, which is to set the material scores to zero because this wasn't done when we built this function because the material array didn't exist yet and since it's been added in we haven't added into this function here to reset this score to zero and when I was preparing for this video I noticed when setting up a couple of positions one after the other the checkboard assert failed because we hadn't reset this score to zero so add that line in okay so preparation for this video we need to add a piece slides array 13 slots into defs.h in this manner and if you haven't downloaded the code you'll need to put in the piece slides array in data.c as so and basically this has true set wherever the piece is a sliding piece so a queen a rook or a bishop because we'll need this in the move generation and we'll also need it later on in some other functions in the program as well so into move generation now one thing i don't like so much about what the way we've done it so far is the way that we've got four functions for generating these white pawn moves and really we could have if we'd use some arrays for some indexing maybe squash these into two or even one function and not have an if side equals white else side is black for generating the pawn moves in this way we could probably have also contained all this inside just one set of statements but pawns are always a bit complicated and a bit funky with on and captures and things and promotions so it's better maybe to have this split out and clear however when it comes to doing the sliding and non-sliding pieces if we do all of them individually then we really will end up with five or six hundred lines of code all of it which pretty much is identical apart from the piece type so we're going to attempt in this move generation function to combine everything together and also uh, the side as well so we're not even going to have an if side equals white or black for the piece type so it's going to be a bit of a head muddle because we're going to use some arrays for indexing but I'll go through it step by step and it'll take the next two or maybe even three videos to go through so the first thing we're going to do like I said is we're going to think about how in the move generation we actually want to go about doing the sliding pieces so let's say it the side to move is white and we're doing sliding pieces then we need some way of knowing that we want to make moves for a white bishop then a white rook and then a white queen in this way you don't need to type this out and then we need to be able to loop through the piece list for each of these pieces but of course if the side is black then we need to actually loop through a black bishop then a black rook and a black queen so that means we need some kind of array which has these pieces inside and some way of stopping the loop once we've looped just through the three pieces of white or the three pieces for black so I prepared the array here and the array is called loop slide piece and the way the move generator will work is when it's generating sliding piece moves if the side to move is white it'll start looping here and basically it'll say keep loop stepping through the array until the result is zero so it'll say I've got a white bishop generate the moves white rook generate the moves white queen generate the moves next is a zero so I'll stop generating moves for sliding pieces for this side and it works in the same way for black now the obvious thing here is then how do you know when side to move is black that you have to start at index 4 rather than index naught in the array well for that we use another array and then it's the loop slide index array which is then indexed by side so the way we would actually find out where we want to start we would say okay the loop slide index say for black to move we know gives a result of four so we then say that the loop slide piece to start the loop is at if loop slide index back in this way which would start us then at the black bishop or when the actual functions done side to move so if side to move was white 
then it would start us at the white bishop. And then we just step through until we hit a zero. So it can be a bit muddling when you first start using arrays in this way for indexing, but it's a common technique and I like doing it like this and it doesn't take very long to get your head around it. So we'll do exactly the same thing for the non-sliding pieces. The, what, the knights and the kings and I'll also put in the indexed array for those as well. Just delete this commented code now and save that as it is. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is before we go down to actually generating the or looping through these indexes, I just want to quickly go into move gen and go down to add white pawn capture move here and I'm just going to drop in some asserts here. And these asserts are simply checking that the argument of the captured piece is either a valid piece or empty and that the squares from and to are on board. And I'm going to drop these this also into the add white pawn move except of course we don't need the cap because it's not an argument and I'm going to drop this into the black pawn capture as well in this way and last but not least I'm going to drop this into the add black pawn move as well so it's just a little bit of safety just to check that the arguments we're sending in this function are okay we don't need to call the checkboard again because I'll assume seeing as at the start of generator moves that was called it was okay. Good, so now that we've got our arrays at the top of the function set up for our indexing here, we can now start having a little play around and printing just a couple of loops out to show how that's going to work. I've put a printf statement printing the side to move here in gen the top of generate all moves and now we're going to add at the top of generate all moves a few variables. So we've got one called dir for direction, one called index and one called piece index which will be used later on. And don't worry about the code that you see in this file I've prepared here, it's got a lot more code than we actually need because I've been trying to go to the end of the generation to check everything's working, I'm going in the right direction. So now let's have a look then at sliders and this works in exactly the way that I've just shown you. So I say that the piece index is at the loop slide index for the side to move. So you remember that loop slide index here will give us a 4 if black is to move. And then I simply take the piece from the loop slide piece at piece index. And here you see I've got an increment. And what I'm doing is that's a post increment. A pre increment would be here, but it's actually a post increment. So say piece index has a value of 4. This will take the piece at the index of 4 and then increment this to 5, after, but only after it's taken the value. It's just a little shortcut. I could also, for example, leave like that, like that like this and then go piece index plus plus here. It's exactly the same thing, but just to save a little bit of space, I've put it in here. And the next thing I need to do now is simply put in a little while loop where it's not generating any moves or doing anything inside it. It's simply saying while the piece is not equal to naught, we'll assert that it's actually a piece. And here I'm just printing out the index and the piece type and then I'm setting the piece to the next piece in the array and again post incrementing piece index. So what will happen is eventually the piece we get out will be zero and the while loop will break. So that should be fairly easy to understand and for non-sliders it's exactly the same thing but using the non-sliders loop. So I'll just paste this in in this way and save and exactly the same principle here. And now what I'll do is, is I'll go into vice and just quickly set up position, generate the moves, I won't print the move list but we'll just see how those loops are then working. So here I'm passing the FEN with the pawn moves W, white, and I'm just simply going to generate all moves and then make and run this. So I'll hit make and it made, thank goodness, and run. And now let's have a look what we have. We're generating the moves for the sliders. Don't worry, I'll bring the console back up in a minute. I just want to go back up to the arrays so it's making some sense what's going on. So we start off with side naught, which is white. 
and we generate the sliders and the first piece index we've got is 1 and the piece is 3. Now you remember that, in fact I will actually reduce this, when we start the loop we take a piece index is from the loop slide index which will give us when the side is white a piece index of naught and then we take the piece from this index but we increment piece index here so this will make piece index 1 which is why when we do the first line of printing here we've got index 1 and the piece is 3 which is a white bishop then the next one is 2 and we've got the white rook and we've got the white queen so the sliders pieces loop is working and now the non sliders gives us a white knight and then a white king so piece 2 and piece 6 piece 6 so for white at least this is working. Now I'll just go back into Vice and I'll change this to the black and save and I'm going to make again and run and now we've got piece 9 which is a black bishop a black rook and a black queen which is piece 11 and 8 is a black knight and 12 is a black king for the non-sliders so we know that our loops, our outer loops here for generating the moves for the sliding and non-sliding pieces are now working irrespective of side. So that all remains now in the next video is to start looping through the actual pieces on the board for each of these piece types and then generating the moves for them. So I hope that was clear. Um, when you first start using arrays in this manner with indexing one array inside the other it can be a little bit confusing but it's actually very, very simple and as I said I simply want to do it to be able to cut down the amount of repetitive code that we'll have in this move generation function. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, comments, criticisms, questions, welcome as always on YouTube.